a joyful meditation to all England of the coronation of our most natural sovereign lord, King Henry the Eighth. A poem by Stephen Hawes. Read for LibriVox by Patricia Booth. The Prologue. The prudent problems and the noble works of the genteel poets in old antiquity, and to this day hath made famous clerks, for the poets wrote nothing in vanity, but grounded them on good morality, and sensing out the fair dulcet fume, our language rude to exile and consume. The right eloquent poet and monk of Bury made many fair books, as it is probable, from idle darkness to light our hemisphere, whose virtuous pastime was much commendable, presenting his books, greatly profitable, to your worthy predecessor, the fifth King Henry, which registered is in the court of memory. Amidst the meadow of Flora, the queen of the gods, Elysian is the spring or well, and by it groweth a fair laurel green, of which the poets do off write and tell. Beside this olive I did never dwell, to taste the water which is aromatic, for to cause me write with lusty rhetoric. Wherefore, good sovereign, I beseech your highness to pardon me which do rudely endite, as in this art having small interest, but for to learn is all mine appetite. In following the monk which did nobly write, beseeching your highness and grace debonair for to accept this rude and little choir. Explicit Prologus O God alone in heaven wearing crown, in whose inspect is every regal sea, both to enhance and for to cast her down, such is the power of thy high majesty. Neither hardiness, treason, nor dignity may withstand thy strength, which is in every place so great and mighty is thy divine grace. Two titles in one thou didst well unify, when the red rose took the white in marriage, reigning together right high and nobly, from whose united titles and worthy lineage descended is by right excellent courage, King Henry the Eighth, for to reign, doubtless, universal his fame, honour, and largesse, which hath espoused a fair flower of virtue, descended of kings, Dame Catherine of Spain. Here there is a missing line. By grace and prudence the peace to attain. Wherefore, England, thou needst not complain, since thou hast crowned openly in sight this king and queen by good true love and right. But what should I show by perambulation all this great triumph for which report is made about now in every nation, and to all this realm to be joy and comfort? Wherefore, you lords, I humbly you exhort, spiritual and temporal, with the commons unified, to give God the praise which doth grace provide. England, be glad. The dew of grace is spread, the dew of joy, the dew wholesome and suit, distilled is now from the rose so red and of the white, so springing from the root, after our trouble to be refute and boot this royal tree was planted as i know by god above the rancour to down throw who is the flower that doth this grace distil but only henry the eighth king of his name with golden drops all england to fulfil to show his largesse his honour and his fame his deeds thereto exemplify the fame wherefore now england with whole devotion, for this young king make daily orison. Our late sovereign, his father excellent, I know right well some hold opinion that to avarice he had intendiment, gathering great riches of this his region. But they little know by their small reason for what high intent he gathered, doubtless unto his grace such innumerable riches. For I think well and God had sent him life, 
as they have marvelled much of this gathering, so it to them should have been affirmative. To have had great wonder of his spending, it may fortune he thought to have moving of mortal war, our faith to stabilise against the Turks, their power to minish. But since that death by his course natural hath him arrested, and would not delay, likewise as he was, so we be mortal. How, where, or when, I can nothing say. Therefore to God above let us all pray, for to grant him mercy which was our king, bringing his soul to joy everlasting. Ah, fair England, mistrust thee right naught, regard right well his son's justice, see how that they which innuentions sought, delighting them in the sin of avarice, to oppress the commons by great prejudice, doth he not punish them according to law, such new promotions to dampen and withdraw. Saturn Fie on thee, Saturn, with thy misty fume, replete with fraud, treason, and wickedness, to show thy beams thou darest not presume. So cursed thou art without unstableness, devoid of grace, fulfilled with doubleness. Thy power to England was never amiable, but always evil, untrue, and variable. Jupiter, now genteel Jupiter, the lodestone of light, thy steadfast beams so fair and so clear, cast now abroad that we may have a sight to gladden us all when that they do appear, sending down truth from thy effulgent sphere, for to make our hearts meekly to incline to serve our sovereign which doth now domine. Mars, O mighty Mars, O God of the war, O flaming honour of every hardy heart, send down thy power truly from so far, us to encourage that we do not start, but by hardiness that we may subvert our sovereign's enemies, to him contrarious by battle's fire rightful and rigorous. Phoebus And thou fair, bright, and aureate Phoebus, Increase now light with love and honour, Among the lords so gay and glorious, With thy radiant beams so high of favour, Devoiding all treachery, debate and rancour, And illumine the mind with liberality Of our good sovereign, with wealth and unity. Venus And Lady Venus, with thy son Cupid, Of every lord do now the heart inspire, with fervent love, that he do not slide, and of the commons set the heart on fire, to love our sovereign with their whole desire, following his grace with dulcet harmony, to the rightful way without in jeopardy. Mercury. Also, thou Mercury, the god of eloquence, the genteel star of grace and virtue, thy beams of right peace and conscience on our king's counsel down send, and renew the truth of justice that they may eschew for to do wrong by the sin of covetous, that herebefore hath done great prejudice. Luna, and thou, watery doyen of the sea, the goddess, with thy broader Aeolus, the god of the wind, encourage the hearts by inward hardiness, here is a missing line. And enemies rise that they be not behind them for to chase, and the sea to scour by grace and fortune in many a stormy stour. O God above, thronanized in heaven, in whose will resteth everything alone, the sky, the earth, with all the planets seven, without whose grace comfort we have none. As thou art three enclosed in one, so save our sovereign from all manner of woe, and this his realm from mortal war also. Holy Church, rejoice with all your liberties, without an damage, the king will ye increase, and be your shield from all adversities, no wrong shall be, but he will it soon cease, knitting the knot of faith, 
love and peace between you and him without disturbance, so for to endure by long continuance. Right mighty prince, our good sovereign lord, to God inclining be hardy and glad. Of you and your realm he will see concord, though other nations be their fearful sad against you murmuring with their works bad, yet dread ye nothing, for God with his might will be always ready to defend the right. Right noble, wise, and excellent princess, right benign lady, liberal and virtuous, descended lineally of the line of nobleness, fair Queen Catherine, so sweet and precious, to our sovereign espoused with joy salacious, almighty God give grace to multiply from you your stores to reign right royally. And Lady Mary, princess right beauteous, endued with honour, virtue and prudence, right meek, goodly, genteel and gracious, sister right dear unto the excellence of our good sovereign, surmounting in sapience, right fair young lady, the great Lord above, he grant you grace, high fame, fortune and love. And all you lords and ladies honourable, and you noble knights so haunting chivalry, unto our sovereign be meek and tenderable, which will reward you well and nobly, as to show his largesse universally, encouraging your hearts that courage chivalrous in time of battle for to be victorious. And all ye officers of every degree, beware extortion, for and it be known, no doubt it is, but ye shall punished be. Take heed of them, the which be overthrown. Remember well how fortune hath he blown the promoters down, and casting them full low, in following them ye shall fall as I trow. England, be true, and love well each other. Obey your sovereign, and God omnipotent, which is above, of all the world the rudder, will send you wealth from whom all good is sent. He gives us grace to keep his commandment, and save our sovereign with his seemly queen, with all their blood, without trouble and teen. Amen. Excusatio Octoris Go, little treatise, submit thee humbly to our sovereign lord, to be in his presence, beseeching his grace to accept thee meekly, and to pardon thy rudeness and negligence. Here there is another line missing. To compile those matters which should pleasure be unto his highness and regal majesty. Now, ye fair ladies, wise and virtuous, I right humbly pray you for to condescend to accept my making. Nothing for Cundius I would that fortune would cunning extend, that mine inditing I might then amend to direct my matters after your pleasance, which yet replete am with all ignorance. Amen. Thus endeth this joyful meditation made and compiled by Stephen Hawes, sometime groom of the chamber of our late Sovereign Lord, King Henry the Seventh, Imprinted at London, in the Fleet Street, at the Sign of the Sun, by Winkin de Word. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.